never understand people who don't want to get more out of their phones. It's a category I wish were expanding more aggressively. Our phones are crazy powerful pocket computers, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to use more of that power in different ways. The future of laptops, and maybe even consumer desktops, is going to resemble the kinds of internals we take for granted on phones and tablets. Those of us out there using DeX or desktop modes are ahead of the curve. Smart. Eventually, those poor, misguided techies writing this stuff off will catch up, and we'll mock them for being so slow. <sighs> Good times. All joking aside, we're just going to take a quick look at some of the refinements to the desktop mode on the LG Velvet. For how many people just fixated on the chipset, it's easy to lose sight of how well-rounded the phone is, like including proper support for USB 3.0, which enables more compatibility with accessories like Ethernet adapters and external display support. Hooking the Velvet up immediately were greeted by a nicer wallpaper. This feels like more of an aesthetic continuity than the out-of-focus background on the V60 or the stock Android background on the V50. But the really important change happens at the bottom of the screen. The V50 and V60 used more of the Android desktop UI, which is still rough around the edges. This is a silly oversight finally corrected on the Velvet, that when you minimize an app, it doesn't completely vanish anymore. Like we should expect, on any modern desktop, we can access the minimized app via an icon on the bottom of the screen. Dex and Huawei had that right, and there are some third-party launcher style solutions but nothing with the simplicity of a built-in first-party desktop mode. A few other small aesthetic changes, the bottom left controls are a bit better delineated from the rest of the bottom dock, as are the time, date, and battery charge on the bottom right. Now, I really hope those become more useful shortcuts in the future. It'd be nice to click there and get access to my battery, networking options, or my clock and calendar. And there are still some other issues to clean up. If you have a window open on the screen, if you open the app drawer, it currently opens behind the window. And that's silly. <laughs> At least minimizing a window works now, so you can kind of get around that. And we still need Google to allow for better mouse and keyboard control when the phone screen turns off. As soon as you start using the desktop on the Velvet, the phone screen wakes back up. But progress is progress. Google has not made this a usable feature. So these steps from LG are welcome improvements. Even on a phone with a mid-ranger chipset, I had no issues at all writing the script in Word while streaming on Netflix and keeping up with my Discord server. Plugged into my next dock, this was a perfectly usable, consumer-grade computer, capable of a fair amount of multitasking. Starting with the newer mid-range, Snapdragons in the 600 and 700 series, these new 5G chipsets, if your phone supports USB 3 and video output, you have a capable computer at the ready. The main part of this lacking, we could use more accessories like my next dock to make this mode easier to use. Until then, those of us who enjoy getting more bang for our buck will keep trying to push the limits on pocket computing while everyone else pretends that there's some practical difference in which ARM-powered computer we're allowed to use to fulfill a specific task. If you've been using a desktop mode with your phone, Drop a comment down below. What have your experiences been? And maybe we can help out some of the techies who are a little behind the curve. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. More than just looking at the processor in a phone, what's the point of a beastly powerful pocket computer if you're just covering the communication basics? We want to do more than that, right? And we can. So if you'd like to help support the production of more conversations like these, there are those links in the description down below. There's the support page on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. That's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I'm planning future videos and reviews and editorials, and they seem to understand that it's silly to separate features based on screen size when a phone and a tablet are using similarly powerful internals. They're just super cool people, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.